Hey, welcome to the channel. We hope that you enjoy today's stories and check out the chapters on the video to see all the stories for today. But before we get into this video, subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon to get notified when we release a new video. So let's get into the video. What's the worst thing a doctor has ever said to you? Experience 1. You're too young for that sort of pain so I don't think you really have pain, do you? I went to another doctor and they also said. It's growing pains. I was 23 and by the time I was 28, my liver was so damaged that it almost died from an autoimmune disease. Corrected and autocorrect from also almost. Experience 2. It was to my husband, I was in the room. I'm not going to figure out what it is. If it were serious, you'd be dead by now. Later, we found out that this doctor was the one that my husband's uncle was seeing before he was diagnosed with colon cancer. By the time another doctor found it, it was too late. He said there was no way it should have been missed. Experience 3. At 30, I was rushed into the hospital out of the blue with a heart infection and needed a valve replacement. The professor was absolutely brilliant, but she told me off the record that You may want to get any close family to come and visit and sort out any important paperwork as it's not guaranteed that you'll wake up again. I obviously pulled through, but her honesty was reassuring and even after 10 years we still send the odd handwritten letter to each other. We also had these stupid personal televisions on each bed which cost about two pounds an hour to watch. The money would seriously rack up as I was in there for weeks, but she blagged me a pirated code so that I could watch it for free lol. Experience 4 I would constantly complain to my doctor that I couldn't breathe when I would walk and I would get shortness of breath, I was always tired and fatigued, and I would get dizzy if I walked too long. She always brushed it off and told me to get more sleep or drink more water even though I was getting plenty of both. Finally, I made an appointment to talk to her face to face and she flat out just told me I was lazy and needed to exercise more. I was so embarrassed because I went with my husband and she made me feel like I was just this lazy couch potato. I switched doctors and my new doc decided to do blood work, which is something that other ladies should have done in the first place and found out I was severely anemic to the point of needing blood transfusions. I felt so much better after I got my infusions. Some people just shouldn't be practicing medicine. Experience 5 I have a freaking doozy for you all if I'm not too late. My sister called me in tears, saying she couldn't even stand up because she was in so much pain. I absolutely boosted to her house and find her vomiting in so much pain she can hardly move. Got her in the car, got to the hospital, and they moved her into ED pretty damn quick as she was screaming in pain. My champion of a sister managed to answer their questions whilst dealing with the worst pain of her life. She did her best to comply with their exams, etc. Eventually, a doctor comes in and says they suspect she has an STD that is causing the pain except there are no STDs showing up on their panels. He tells us it's his best guess, tells us we can be on our way, and leaves the room. Cue my sister vomiting in excruciating pain every time she moved, we pressed the call bell, and they asked what was up. I said there is absolutely no way we could leave the hospital with her in this condition. The nurse just scoffed at us and then left. We were left in ED with my sister vomiting in pain, telling me she was going to die every call button press resulted in literally no one coming to see us. Of if they did, we got told there are bigger emergencies than you right now. She had at least seven buckets of six sitting on the shelf from how much pain she was in, and no one saw us for about two to three hours, not even exaggerating. She was eventually transferred, because we became too annoying, I guess, to an observation unit overnight. I had to go home because they wouldn't let me stay. The next day, I got there, my sister was a freaking shell of herself. She was literally gray and said the pain was still there, she just didn't have the energy to fight it anymore. I told her since she was in the hospital, at least she was safe, but she told me she legitimately thought she was going to die. 
A day later, she calls me they finally did an ultrasound after three days. Apparently, New Zealand hospitals have no ultrasound technicians on for holiday periods and told me her ovary was twisted around a ridiculous number of times. She said they have to operate right freaking now. She's lucky to be alive. The hospital wouldn't allow us to have any documentation about her operation or anything. They told us it was not her information to have. The fact that the doctor wrote her off as having an STD and never looked into anything else until the last moment when she was going septic sickens the freak out of me. And the fact ovarian torsion is a medical emergency whilst we were being told there were bigger things to worry about. I'm just glad she's still freaking here. Experience 6 I was 18 to 19 and during my first gyno appointment I told her how something hurt when I had intercourse. I wanted to start birth control and she told me that I was too young to have intercourse so she wasn't going to help with that. Experience 7 That I obviously didn't dislocate my knee. I had put it back in myself before I went to her because it wasn't swollen out like a balloon. He then proceeded to push my knee down flat after it had seized in a bent position to put a stretchy bandage on it. I went back two days later because I had lost feeling in my toes as the knee had pinched nerves. They did an MRI and I had a complete tear of the ACL and my bones and the shin bone and femur were bright white from the bone bruises or fractures. I absolutely dislocated my knee and the doctor just smashed my knee down and said, Off you go. Experience 8 Welp, looks like you're probably going to go blind. While I have visions of myself walking about tapping a white cane in front of me, he blithely adds, But don't worry about it. Corneal transplants are 99% effective. You'll be fine. I did have transplants later when my eyesight got bad enough to warrant it. They worked a miracle, but man, lead with the you'll be fine next time. Experience 9 Three years ago, I went for an eye test, and the optician gave me a note and told me to go directly to an eye hospital. I gave the note to the receptionist at the eye hospital, the lady said. Oh, right. Come this way. I was taken right through the waiting room and put in a CT scanner within 20 minutes of arrival. Shortly after, a doctor came and said that there is something in the middle of your brain and that an ambulance is going to take me to a neurosurgery specialist hospital. A few hours later, I was having a drain put into my skull to get rid of built-up spinal fluid pooling behind my eyes. An MRI scan revealed a golf ball-sized cyst in the middle of my head that was causing problems. That was a pretty bad day. Experience 10 When I was 19, my primary care doctor, male, told me he could do a pap smear for me at my physical. When I told him I already had a gynecologist, he said, I can do it professionally or personally. Needless to say, I never saw him again and reported him. Experience 11 This was overheard by a friend of mine when a neurosurgeon looked at the CT of her son's brain. There's no point in doing this one. This kid is done. I'm out of here. The good news is another neurosurgeon did the surgery and the kid, now about 40, is perfectly fine today. Another story I heard while working in a hospital but cannot verify, a guy was gravely injured due to being shot in the face, there was no chance of recovery and he was expected to die within a very short period of time. An intern walks into the room and says, is this the guy we are going to harvest the kidneys from? The doomed patient was reported to have reacted by briefly bolting up into a sitting position. I hope it is not true, but they did get the kidneys. Do you like listening to these stories? Do you want to hear more of them? Then click that like button, subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell. And check the description for links to more videos and interesting stories. Experience 12 That I have genital warts, proceeded to freeze them off and sent me on my way. I went to my family doctor, and she told me I did not have genital warts and was very confused by the other doctor's diagnosis and treatment. Found out later on that the original doctor who gave me TX and diagnosed me with GW had come to Canada because he lost his license while practicing in the USA, then shortly after, his clinic was no longer open in my area. Experience 13 
After my knee surgery, my doctor told me that I would still be able to practice my martial arts when I recovered. But I had never done martial arts before. He probably told me that because I'm Asian. Edit, we both had a good laugh when I told him that I didn't do any martial arts. I was actually a tennis player, and he told me that my tennis days were over. I still play tennis to this day, lol. Experience 14. When I was 7, I slipped and hit my head on the door axle. I was rushed to the hospital cause well, at that age, my skull was like butter. I was crying a lot, and one of the doctors told me, Stop crying or I'll make it hurt more. Experience 15. In middle school, I was seeing a psychiatrist for generalized anxiety and panic disorder. I had been struggling with my weight because I was too anxious to eat, and at one point I was about 15 pounds underweight. I started taking antidepressants, and I gained weight once my anxiety started improving. One day, my psychiatrist brought me over to a scale so he could weigh me. He told me that I needed to watch what I was eating because I was starting to get fat. I was finally at the low end of a healthy weight after struggling for months, and it was such a blow to my self-esteem after all the progress I had made. I broke out in tears as soon as he said that it crushed me. My mom yelled at him, and we walked out of his office and never came back. Experience 16 I once told the wrong family member that her mother was coding. I have some decent excuses, but that was horrible. It was late enough at night that I was the only doc on, with just a handful of nursing and tech staff. As we go into those quieter hours, one by one the other doctors sign out their patients to the overnight staff and leave. I got called into a room to run a code, which someone found down and already worked on for 20 minutes en route by EMS. It wasn't looking very hopeful for a meaningful recovery. A woman in her 40s appears in the doorway and says she's the daughter. If I'm the only doc on, I have to do the intubation, run the code, and speak with the family, sometimes it's all at the same time. Since she turned up and appeared to recognize the patient, I failed to confirm the patient's name with the daughter, and instead launched into the delicate questions, how long had she been ill, how did this start? Turns out, the daughter was actually the daughter of the previous patient in that room, who had been moved out to accommodate the arrival of the coding patient. When she came in, she told the front desk that she didn't need any help finding her mom's room, so she brought herself back, very unusual, but the code was monopolizing the staff. Her mom had the same hair color, and there were all kinds of tubes obscuring the face during these times. Her actual mom was just fine, two doors down. Well, the daughter didn't have a heart attack, so that was nice. And never will I ever again gloss over confirmation of identity, no matter how obvious it seems. Experience 17. My doctor immediately said my symptoms were from an STD. Then doubled down saying I was lying about my sexual activity. Like, dude, I'm a grown-ass adult. If I thought I had an STD, I would have said so. I told him I thought I had a kidney infection. He said it didn't make sense. Did all the blood work, and all were negative for STDs. What was it? A damn kidney infection. Although he asked me before I left how I knew it was a kidney infection, I told him I had been watching House MD and the symptoms matched. Experience 18. If the headaches and tinnitus are still present in a month, come back and see me again because it's probably a brain tumor. And with those few words, my then doctor triggered a years-long battle with health anxiety. It wasn't a brain tumor, just a sinus infection. Experience 19. I was newly clean and had to have most of my teeth pulled. The dental surgeon poked around at my heel track marks then brought all his staff in to look at them. Then he began accusing me of taking cocaine and Xanax the night before and threatening he couldn't put me out because of that. I literally did not understand what was happening. It was humiliating on a level I cannot explain. I was already humiliated and embarrassed at the shape of my mouth, now this. All I could do was politely sit there and take it, wait for him to finish with all his little hate, and do his job. Asshole. Experience 20. 
A doctor told my parents I'd gotten used to all the attention after having an emergency appendectomy and was only pretending to still be in excruciating pain. I was seven-ish. What actually happened was they'd left acid just around and it was literally burning tissue and creeping over to my liver. I spent a month in the hospital. A different doctor, who used to be a family friend, once told my sister, six years old, that Tourette's syndrome wasn't real and that she needed to stop faking it. I can't tell you how damaging that was and what it took to help her feel secure with her tics again. We hope you enjoyed listening to today's stories. If you want to see more stories, check out these videos or check the links in the description for more videos. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. And ring that notification bell.